Hey there, Internet. Welcome to the Hard On Gear channel, where I discuss and review my use and abuse knives and gear. Knife of the Week, Episode 18, coming at you with a quick overview of what you see on the table here. At the end, I'll tell you which knife kind of came through the most. This is an overview of the knives I used over the last two weeks, as it's been a little bit of a gap between the last video as I have just jumped back into the wildfire world. So new job, new bosses, new living environment, and getting my head back into all this stuff, plus a work situation where I'm jumping into like a low-level leadership position in a new spot. Just putting a lot of effort into work and uh, then also my free time right now and uh, going out and being social and uh, just kind of getting to know my new coworkers. So I'll get back into a rhythm here soon, but right now I'll tell you what I've used in the meantime. Haven't done any uh, bush camping or really gone back to my spot. I will go as soon as the snow melts off here sometime in the next week or so, because there is still about a foot of snow right now. Hopefully by freaking May, we'll be able to uh, get out in the woods and start laying some hose, getting some pumps going and getting some training in. You will see the Recon 1 out here, which has not been on the table for a very long time. This, as you will know if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, I only have the left hand pocket clip for, but there is still a way for me to carry this in my uh, main left hand pocket if I want to carry it reverse grip. It's got pretty good detent, so I'm not as concerned about scarring myself and accidentally skewering, 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 yeah, my uh, hand as I reach into my pocket. So I uh, never had that issue with this knife, ran it like this for a few years. But as I went to do this for a couple days, while well, the Recon 1 disappears in the pocket pretty well for a 9 inch folding knife, I really just couldn't get back into the habit of like, yeah, see, I've got, ooh, I don't really have it loosened or looped up the way it needs to, to be drop deployed. And then uh, to take it out and do that, not a big issue, but it's just not as convenient as being able to pull a knife out of your pocket slam with the thumb stud. Or what I ended up carrying instead of the cold steel the week before last was the ba -ba -ba, Benchmade Super Freak back into action. Still haven't ordered the thumb studs, but I, kind of went with the whole axis lock deployment and uh, just got used to it, made sure I kind of practiced it a few times and just got used to that mo uh, motion of pulling it out of my pocket and going with the thumb studs without accidentally throwing it or anything. So no issues there, super functional, still an amazing knife, missed having this thing in my pocket. And for last week, I went with the Cold Steel Code 4, the kind of a, what I like to say, the Recon 1 Mini, although there is a Recon 1 Mini, I'm quite sure. This is just a smaller, lighter, but very similar uh, knife to the Recon 1. Big fan of this thing. I uh, used it for a decent amount of small EDC stuff. Had to cut a lot of zip ties, just taking off uh, tags for a lot of the gear and equipment I was signed out. And I uh, did just touch this thing up and put a nice fine edge back on it. But yeah, great freaking knife. The Leatherman Signal in crimson red on me again. Used it for a few small things as far as the pliers go, but I was in a, like a workshop type area a lot of the time. So there was always some tools around. So I ended up using those because they were handier. But the uh, Tori Anaconda is of course on my left hip as always. Super cool knife, use it a little bit, but kind of hard to pull this thing out without doing some flashy uh, spinny tricks with it. It's almost just a habit at this point. So I just try and keep that thing out on the belt where it needs to be. And the Azula 2, of course, for uh, all kinds of funny, crazy stuff that I'll get into in a second. The knives I used the most for sure were the Cold Seal Code 4, the SE Azula 2, and the Benchmade Super Freak. The Recon one, I don't even think I used it. I carried it for a day or so and I just ended up swapping it out. The Tor Anaconda, like I said, keeping it chill in the background. The signal, while it did get used, not really a contender this week. These three knives got a lot of action because, again, new job, uh, opening packages, opening some mail and stuff like that, but then lots of zip ties, lots of uh, just tape and different things. So I ended up touching these knives up quite a bit this week. Just uh, quick passes on the uh, ceramic rods and the strop of the work sharp field sharpener. This thing was getting a lot of attention as I was uh, showing a lot of my new coworkers my favorite field sharpener as of the last year or so. This thing is such a beast and I'm getting crazy hair popping edges in about five, 10 minutes and uh, even less if I'm only touching these things up. So while these two folders got all kinds of action this week, I'm going to have to give the knife of the week to the Azula 2. This knife became a loner knife multiple times as one of my first tasks was, well, it was very army-esque and reminded me of uh, a lot of the dumb not dumb, but you know, less than enjoyable tasks that I was given last year. Uh, I was basically tasked to uh, have me and my group clean the kitchen. The uh, manager actually even 
took his finger and dusted the surface to explain that he wanted it pretty much spotless for like a food inspector. So, hey, no issues there. Definitely good at that stuff. But uh, a couple times we had to scrape like burnt on stuff off of like ovens and all that. I just kind of gave the Azula out where it needed, the Azula 2 rather, and uh, just kind of told people, hey, go nuts, do what you need to do with it. Now, I could not do that and would not do that with any of these three knives or really any of my other knives. Uh, unless maybe like a more something like that, a more companion knife, something $20. But as far as things that I'm going to carry on me, this thing is a beautiful knife, not cheap. Definitely uh, ooh, yeah, between the $150, $200 range, to almost no matter where you buy it nowadays, maybe cheaper. You might be able to get this for $100-ish, $120 in the US. Nonetheless, uh, fantastic knife. And even if someone did break it, warranty, replaceable, send it back, get a new one. But nah, not a problem. The Azula 2 was scraping metal on metal and doing all kinds of terrible, terrible things that you would typically not let your friends and new co-workers do with your nice knives, but you can get away with it. And I'll be ordering a new SE without a doubt. My next knife that I will be purchasing will be an SE product. I'm narrowing it down, but I've got a very good idea of what I want to be carrying on my hip for when I'm in the woods. And uh, geez, I think I've got it. Any guesses down below? It's a uh, SE something comments let me know what you're thinking also feel free to hit the like button if you wouldn't mind bumping this video up like i said the next couple weeks i'll start to settle into this new environment and before things get crazy in the fire season i'll get a few videos banked up make sure we got some steady content cut for you in the future so feel free to subscribe and turn the notification bell on as well if you want to get those videos as soon as they come out into your notifications and we'll see you on one of those or one of the videos popping up on the side panel or somewhere is on the screen here this is the hard on gear channel signing off